Well, welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Thursday, March the 16th. Uh, starting off with Jordan Bennington, this is very predictable. Uh, after last night's game uh, against the Minnesota Wild, uh, him being suspended makes a lot of sense. Uh, he is uh, due to have a hearing with Department of Player Safety. I want to say today, but we've seen uh, with Keandre Miller, for instance, it was a couple of days before they announced the suspension. So, uh, he is going to be suspended. Uh, the hearing situation, basically, over the last three years, the only player who had a hearing and didn't get suspended was Subban. That's the only one I can remember that was announced to have a hearing and didn't get suspended. So, uh, it's for roughing a sp unsportsmanlike conduct, how they term it on Ryan Hartman, um, also known as smacking a guy in the face with your blocker. So, uh, and, and just basically losing it. So it was an entertaining game last night. Uh, Bennington's complete and total meltdown was part of it. Uh, and now he's probably going to be out for a couple of games. So uh, for St. Louis, who are currently residing, I do believe it's 16 points out of the playoffs. They're not in the playoff race anyways. So for Bennington, uh, we'll see whether it's one, two games. My guess is two games. I feel like it'll probably be two. That seems to be the sweet spot they're in right now. And so, yeah, uh, we will see. So this story is getting a lot of attention. I didn't report on it yesterday. I was waiting for something else to take place with this, and now it has, so now we'll report on it. And it's Carson Briere. Now, I want to say this first off. As a parent, uh, the, the sins of the child don't necessarily reflect on the parent. Uh, you can be a great parent and raise a kid that this doesn't necessarily make great decisions. You can be a terrible parent and raise a kid who makes really good decisions and has a pretty good life out of it. It, it really does at some point in time uh, an, an action of the son or of the daughter is of the son and of the daughter and not as much a reflection on the parents. So Carson Briere uh, from Marcy Hurst University, where he's on the hockey team, uh, he has been suspended by the university in relation to the video that has gone viral of him pushing an empty wheelchair down the stairs. So basically the occupant of said wheelchair was using the washroom at the time and he decided to push the wheelchair down a flight of stairs in front of video video camera. This reminds me of what I tell people these days. Always assume you're being videoed. Always assume that at all times. Um, and, and so, and I know personally as a YouTuber, I always make sure that, you know, my behavior, I have to be aware at all times of where I am and that there may be people who see and hear what I'm doing. And even if I'm doing something as a joke, I have to remember there may be people around me who don't get on it, get get in on it. And in this case, I, I don't think you can argue what Carson Breer is doing uh, was some kind of a joke. Uh, it and if, if it was, it just, no. But uh, yeah, so he's been suspended from the university along with two other individuals. And again, this gets a lot of press because it's Daniel Breer's kid. But again, I, 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 uh, it is one of those things that um, I do need to report on at this point because he has been suspended by the university. Um, we'll see if this one, the, this ends up blowing over, what ends up happening. Uh, but yeah, this, it's not a good look. And regardless of what his reasoning was, and, um, this might be one of those things that people come up and go, well, you know, he was really drunk, but eh, it's, there, there, there's a bit of an excuse there. At any rate, uh, we'll see if anything else comes out of it. If he gets expelled from said university, or if there's any charges or anything that take place, or if, if money is paid uh in order to uh, for for restitution purposes uh for the person who owned said wheelchair that was pushed down the stairs at any rate the story's out there it's gone viral always assume if you're going to do something that's a, a prick move just assume you're on camera and don't just that's that's a good rule these days just just don't do it so moving on to a junior aged uh player who hasn't had any incident like that and that's connor bedard uh the number one and, and really, looking at the stats, there's no doubt he's going to be number one. He's leading the entire Canadian Hockey League in scoring. 52 games, he's now up to 63 goals, 66 assists, 129 points. So, ridiculous totals being put up. Uh, and for him to lead the, lead the entire Canadian Hockey League in goals and points, to put that into perspective, he is playing in a league where you have overagers, you have guys who are older... You have players who have already been drafted previously in the National Hockey League who are not putting up point totals like he is. Bedard's special, and so he is the undisputed number one pick in this upcoming draft, and 
Uh, it is different. I know people talked about the hype around uh, Lafreniere before he was drafted, and there was a lot, and I don't think Lafreniere's lived up to it. I'm not going to pretend he has, but it's it's not like Bedard. It's not it, it's not close. This one is this one's different, and so we'll see uh, at the end of the season. And and again, Regina's not expected to be like a, a, a big deal uh, in the WHL playoffs, and they're not expected to, to win anything. That's why when they were talking about trades and this and that, there was co- there was conversation about whether or not Bedard might end up with a contending team in the WHL. But he made the decision, no. He, he was fine where he was, and he stays in Regina. Uh, so for the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, Paling's been activated off of IR. They've had some injury issues, which not anything new for the Pittsburgh Penguins, of course. Uh, Paling's been a solid addition for them. Uh, and, and so he'll be inserted right back into a lineup that's that's going to need him uh, tonight because for Pittsburgh, uh, these games against the Rangers are important. If they have any design designs on moving up to third in the division, they would need to win today against the Rangers. They would need to win on Saturday against the Rangers, and they need to do it in regulation as well. And then a little bit of help it would, would be nice as well. But uh, they do want to get back into the conversation when it comes to top three in the division. And uh, paling maybe helps them on some level, right? Uh, bad news here for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, well, there's good and bad. The good news is Josh Morrissey returns to the lineup tonight. Uh, the bad news is that Sam Gagne has had hip issues during the season, and he has opted to have surgery. So as a result of opting to have surgery, his season is done with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and any time that a player has hip surgery, you do get concern, right? Uh, the... The reality is that when guys have hip surgery, that can be career-ending. With Gagne at this stage of his career, there's the possibility that it ends up being career-ending because, again, hip surgery can be like that. But all the best to Gagne, and hopefully he recovers quickly. Uh, now, that's an injury we can all see. Now we get into injuries we can't. And uh, Slater Cuckoo, taking, and I think this was brave of him to do this, to reveal that throughout his NHL career, uh, he had dealt with severe anxiety. And it caused him to not eat. And I, I know from experience, uh, there have been times where, um, you know, it mentally I'm going through a lot and I may not eat myself. Uh, there was a period about nine years ago now where I dropped, I want to say it was 30 pounds in about six weeks. And I mean, I played it off like, oh, you know, this is great. This is awesome. It's not great. And I didn't feel healthy and I didn't look healthy either. And so Cuckoo was talking about how he was losing weight and guys would joke around like, hey, you know, let's go out and get a bite and all this. And they'd invite him out to dinner. And his teammates were were decent to him because they didn't know about what he was going through. So he would make excuses and he would he would get his own takeout and he would, you know, play it off like, oh, you know, whatever it was to get out of the team dinners. And he had a severe anxiety around people and just in general. Well, when you're a pro athlete and then you're dealing with the amount of criticism and not only that, but a defenseman in the NHL. And so the criticism and the scrutiny that being a pro athlete added on to that anxiety he already had that had been basically part of his genetic makeup, uh, that just made it worse. And it just it just kept getting worse from there. So uh, if you're dealing with in life a situation where you feel like, you know, maybe you feel like you're not good enough, you just feel like you're, you're, you're weird, you're different, something's wrong, and then you're being put in a position where you get that public scrutiny and you have fans yelling that you suck and fans and it's just I can only imagine right uh so I I know that anxiety is something that's been focused on more over the last couple of years but it's nothing new and I I guarantee that Cuckoo's not the only professional athlete who has gone through this and it has affected his career and he says that's why he stepped away that's why he stepped away from from hockey and uh, I, you know, I, I applaud him for his his strength of character and his bravery for stepping forward and admitting this. And I hope this makes it easier for other people to admit that they go through similar things and get the help they need. Um, and it is interesting because I and I've said this for years on this channel that you have physical injuries and those are respected and teams will respect it and you don't have to worry about coming out publicly. You know, I broke my ankle. Oh, your ankle sucks. What's your brought you stupid ankle? But if you come out and say I'm having, you know, mental health issues and, and there's something wrong here, people are like, well, well, just get over it. You know, just go for a walk. Just get some fresh air. You'll be fine. Yeah. And and it it's just as silly to suggest that to somebody who's going through this kind of just life-altering anxiety. 
uh, and and just to tell them basically just to you know get over it. So and again with the 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 amount of stress I was under nine years ago, there were people who said just get over it, just just get over it, like it's that easy, right? So again with a physical ailment, I broke my arm. Well, just get over it. Look at that, my arm's not broken anymore. It's not not the way that works. So at any rate, uh, all the best to Cuckoo and and hopefully he's able to get everything on track in his own life. Now, getting back to other NHL news, uh, Thomas Shabbat may play tonight for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Ridley Gregg recalled. I was honestly a little bit surprised they sent Gregg down to the AHL, and I understand with, you know, waivers and rosters being made up the way they are, but Gregg brings a good energy to the lineup. So with the Sens, they're, they're, they're kind of at this point out of the, the hunt for a playoff spot, but uh, it would be nice to see them win some games down the stretch here, and so... Uh, Greg, I think, can help them do that. Now, there's a lot of talk about Ryan Reynolds at this point as well and, and the whole sale of the team. Now, his share of Mint Mobile, which they just sold apparently to T-Mobile, $340 million. And it's a shame he sold Mint Mobile on one level because those are some of my favorite commercials because they're very simple, they're entertaining, but they're simple and they get your attention. Um, especially the new one where they've subletted their, their ad to Jack in the Box. That's brilliant. That's just, it's, it's just, it's smart advertising. So if Reynolds can bring some of that to the Ottawa Senators, that's another thing, right? So his group, the group he's, he's aligned himself with is not considered a favorite to land the team. That being said, would I be surprised if whoever wins the bid ends up circling around Ryan Reynolds and says, Hey, would you like to come in? And be part of this? No, it would not surprise me at all. It would be a PR win for whoever gets that bid. Now, the highest selling price is going to affect the perception of National Hockey League franchises. So I've talked about this in previous videos as well, which helped put people to sleep, on the finances of pro sports teams and how NHL teams are seen as a really good investment and that they're probably undervalued. So if the if the Ottawa Senators sell for say a billion dollars, that's going to raise the valuation of other franchises, meaning other owners get more money. So even though the sale of the Ottawa Senators that goes to Melnick's family and and to the Ottawa Senators themselves, uh, that money goes to them, but it definitely will have a positive impact on the rest of the league and how it's seen. So again, this is all about public perception and just making it so that. Other other teams are worth more, and and it will do that. Uh, it will mean that the next time that a team's up for sale, maybe you start at a billion dollars, depending on which team it is, right? So it it and it, again, it would mean that should the NHL decide to expand, should the NHL allow for a relocation, there's always the relocation fee. All of that goes up, so the NHL makes more money, even if they don't directly make that money off the sale of the Senators. Um, so the Buffalo Sabres, watching some NCAA guys deciding on signing contracts and all that, they're anxious to get Devin Levi. Uh, and apparently at the trade deadline when there was talk about whether or not Buffalo would get another goaltender, they weren't happy about that talk because they've basically promised Devin Levi that if he signs a contract with them, there is a path to the NHL right away. And that he will be given every opportunity to be a National Hockey League uh, goaltender right out of the gate. They want Levi in the lineup, and they want him now. And so uh, it, the ball is in his court as to when he signs. And all accounts, it sounds like this kid's going to be really good in, in the National Hockey League. And having a tandem of Lukanen and Levi is probably the plan uh, for the future for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Because eventually Craig Anderson won't be playing, right? It, maybe when he's 50? or I, it, We'll see. Anderson, we, we kind of wrote him off a few years ago, and he's, he's proven us wrong, so I don't want to write him off again. Uh, of course, Comrie's been hurt. Uh, I, I don't know that, that they bring Comrie back next year. I would think Levi and Lukanen may very well be the goaltenders next season. And I'm aware of contracts being signed and all that, and Comrie's being as it is, but uh, I do think with Buffalo, if they have to waive Comrie next season, they waive Comrie. Because I think Comrie, I think it's a three-year deal for Comrie that was signed. Uh, I, I don't think I know it wasn't a one-year deal, but at any rate, uh, we'll see what Levi's decision is. And you know, Buffalo has had a, a, a pretty decent run of things. Yes, uh, a little bit tougher recently. Uh, they've suffered that slide, but they delayed that slide until late in the season this year, and at least they played games that meant something. And the games they're playing still do kind of mean something, which is saying a lot after the last 
what is it, 10 years since they were playing games that meant much late in the season? It's been a while. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.